Thank you to all of you for joining us for our Sunday Spiritual Communion service from the Rectory. This morning we have a distinctly pastoral feel with many references to sheep and shepherds. Now Jesus said that he was the good shepherd, but this morning we are going to reflect on what it means for Jesus to be the gate of the sheep pen. Our organist Ian Skipper has recorded some hymns for us and recorded the choir virtually and they sound brilliant. Neve from Nutfield is reading for us and Jennifer from Bletchingley is leading us in our prayers and she also chose a picture to go with the prayers as well. So we sing our first hymn which is Jesus where'er thy people meet. Very apt for us today when we're all dispersed in different places but wherever we are Jesus is with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! We come before God, and we come before him saying sorry for those things that we have done wrong or failed him in some way. And so let us sit or kneel if you want to in your homes to confess our sins. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his own image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we collect our thoughts and prayers together in the prayer for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so I'm going to hand over to Neve, who is going to bring us our first reading. Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, the Fellowship of the Believers. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and their fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. The awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all the things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in the homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who are being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Neve. And so to prepare us for our gospel reading, the choir from St Mary's have recorded The King of Love My Shepherd Is, and we can join them.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. And Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and who and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now most of you know that I am surrounded by fields and at the moment that means sheep. I am surrounded by sheep and lambs. Now, most of the time, if I do hear anything, it's the odd bleat here and there. But the other afternoon, I came home from a walk to hear very anxious bleating noises. Now, I can make out a sheep and a lamb, and usually that means mum and child have got separated. So I rushed out to the back garden only to find this. <laughs> Yes, a lamb had got into the pigsty, but there was Anthony trying to catch the lamb. The video was just as he was catching the poor little mite, but he'd been out there for quite some time trying to catch him running around after this lamb. You see, lambs and sheep, for that matter, do get lost. They roam around eating grass, and before they know it, they're in a strange place away from the others, and importantly, the shepherd. And they get scared really easily and will run away from danger or their perceived danger and get lost again. Sheep like to be together and we think it's probably because there's safety in numbers. They will make friends apparently and it's said that they do get sad if a friend is hurt or is taken away for some reason. But they do generally stay in flocks but when one walks off the rest will all follow. Now sheep aren't stupid, they're quite intelligent and they have amazing uh, memories and recognition skills. They will not only follow each other but they will also go after another sheep or uh, someone who is posing as a friend if someone is offering them food and that's how shepherds gain their trust but also how strangers gain their trust as well. However sheep do get to know their shepherds and they will recognise the shepherd's voice. Sheep aren't aggressive, but when a ewe has had a lamb, they can get a bit aggressive then. So that's at the moment, be careful. Now sheep see in colour and have unlimited peripheral vision. They also have excellent hearing, which is how they recognise the shepherd's voice. So because sheep follow each other, wander around eating grass, taking no notice of where they are and will not defend themselves, sheep need to have a shepherd to direct them to nutritious pasture and to keep them safe. You see, there's far more to sheep than mincels and jumpers. Now I wondered though, if you recognised yourself in that brief description, maybe just a tad, there are frequent references in scripture to people being like sheep and behaving like a flock. They certainly have become an integral part of our lives and culture, probably because people have been shepherding sheep in the Middle East since Abraham. And just as people have compared um, sheep, have been compared to sheep, God is compared to a shepherd 
and Jesus calls himself the good shepherd who will lay down his life for his sheep. Because sheep are such an integral part of people's lives and culture, they were often used to teach valuable lessons about life and God, and our gospel today is no exception. In this part of John's gospel, we consider Jesus being the gate of the sheep pen, and we think about the sheep hearing his voice and consider how we hear God's voice too. And knowing when and how God speaks to us is about a relationship with him. The sheep know the shepherd and they know his voice, unlike the lamb and Anthony. Sheep know and trust the shepherd and they need to because it's the shepherd who will keep them safe. The shepherd who will stand at the gate of the sheep pen and make sure they all get in safely and are allowed out in safely. So how do we have a relationship with this God who wants to keep us safe? At the moment, the question is even harder, isn't it? How do we have a relationship with God when we can't go into church and pray, light a candle, take communion? I guess we're all feeling sad and somehow cut off. But it's not just church that is shut. We can't go and see our family and friends. We can't go to the cinema, a restaurant, Marks and Spencers and other retailers sell underwear too. Now, someone said to me the other day that the highlight of their week now, their going out night, is Thursdays when they go out of their front door and clap the NHS and see all their neighbours. Does it feel as if every door is shut to you? It's for our safety though, isn't it? Perhaps we now know what it's like for sheep in a pen and allowed out until, not allowed out until it's safe. In Walter Brueggemann's Lent study written in 2017, A Way Other Than Our Own, he reflects on Paul's message of hope to the Roman church and he said something that I thought really speaks into our situation today. All around now are barriers and gates and fences that draw lines around gifts and possibilities and resources and accesses. The lines are drawn closer and closer until all are excluded except the blessed cunning ones and even they are left nervous about when the next door will be built and who will then be excluded. You see, it's not just this pandemic that has caused doors to shut. Yes, we are all in this particular situation together, but before the pandemic closed our doors and shut our gates, some of us were experiencing shut doors of a very different kind. Some doors and walls are very visible to us. Fences, gated communities, high walls and barriers, checkpoints, and security walls, barriers at the airports. And other walls are not so visible. Inaccessibility to the disabled, language barriers, prejudice and hatred that create fear and anxiety towards minority groups, refugees, asylum seekers, cultural barriers that prevent girls and women having independent lives, chronic illness and poverty on every level. These barriers and more were already there when COVID-19 came on the scene. They are still present across the world. But what COVID-19 has done is give us all that bitter taste of exclusion which prevents us from doing just what we feel like. In our gospel today, the central image is not so much the shepherd but the gate. Jesus says, I am the gate. The gate of the sheepfold, the doorway to, to where the sheep will be safe. Jesus stands at the doorway, but he doesn't use this image to mean that he wants to shut us out, to separate us, suggesting, heaven forbid, that some are holier than others or deny us access. No, Jesus stands at the gate to do the very opposite. He is the gate because he wants to give us all access to everything that he can and wants to offer us.
Jesus is the gate and says to us, welcome. Jesus knew then, Jesus knew throughout the history, the whole of history, past, present and future, that there will be others who will do exactly the same, who will offer us all sorts of things if we follow them and live their way. But their way will lead to other folds, other pens that could be destructive. What Jesus offers is life in abundance, whoever we are. And what's amazing is that he knows us all and calls us by name. We just need to recognise his voice when he does. Now we may be shut out of church, but we are never shut out of his love and care. Even though the church doors are locked, Jesus welcomes us still. Now you may find that because there are less distractions where there are pockets of time that are silent and still that you didn't have before. Even if you're working at home, from home with the children all running around you and you're trying to teach them as well, maybe you've found those moments of stillness and quiet. When you do, light a candle, say the Lord's Prayer, read scripture, but more importantly, talk to God and then be still and silent and allow him to talk to you. In this strange time that we find ourselves in, just as you may be phoning relatives and friends more, developing those relationships, do the same with God. Speak to him and listen to his voice and it may change how you respond and react to others when we do come out of lockdown. Walter Brueggemann goes on to say this, here is the news, out beyond the world of exclusion and rejection and hostility, there is on offer a world of welcome that sees the other not as threat or competitor, but as cohort on the pilgrimage of humanity. That alternative world of welcome is signed by bread and by wine, but it is known by lives that reach out and touch in order to heal and transform. As we come out of lockdown, our pilgrimage on earth as human beings will look different to the one we entered lockdown. But I think how different will depend on our relationship with God because that relationship will have an impact on our relationship with others. When we enter the sheep pen through Christ the gate, let us be transformed by his love so that we can love others. I know the church is locked. But sometimes, when it was open, I felt that so many followers of Christ lived such separate and distant lives, excluding others who didn't fit their image of God or their image of themselves. I hope that when we get back, our churches will resemble more the life of those early believers who were devoted to hearing God's word, to living in fellowship with each other, to communion and prayer, and who witnessed miracles in their midst. They looked out for each other, cared for each other, had everything in common and praised God together, enjoying the fellowship they all had. And as more and more added to their number, they welcomed them in, not excluding or judging, but welcoming everyone into the sheep pen. Amen. Brueggemann finished with this prayer, so let's pray. God of all hope, we know all too well a world of betrayal, despair, exclusion and conflict. May we live into our alternative world of truth, hope, welcome and harmony as we trust and follow you. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I'm going to hand over to Jennifer as she leads us in a time of prayer this morning. This morning, I am using the Celtic idea of prayer as a circle of love. Let us think of our prayers as being like the circles in a pond made by throwing a stone into the water. Before we throw the stone into the pond, it is still and silent. The stone drops into the middle of the pond and we see the first circle emerge. In this circle are the people closest to us, our family and our friends, the irreplaceable ones. There aren't many people in this first circle, but we know them well. We know their strengths, their struggles, their enjoyments, and their special need for our prayers today. Let us pray for them. Let them know that if we trust our lives to you, you will provide all we need, courage and hope in our troubles, and the joy of your salvation. The circle spreads. Now look at the second circle. Here are the people we know. Perhaps we work with them, socialise with them. Here are the members of our more distant family whom we don't make contact with as much as we ought, but we care for them nonetheless. Here are our neighbours, friends from the past. And here are many needs too. Let us bring those needs to God and pray for them. The circle spreads again. Now look at the third and the fourth circles. Here are the people we know less well. We might see them in the street and smile, see them walking their dog, meet them on the station platform at the school gate. There are hundreds of these people, too many for us to pray for individually and we don't know their needs. But they are known to God. He has loved them from their birth. Let them be washed by these circles of our prayers. The circle has spread right out now. They reach the edge of the pond. One after another they lap against the banks. Our prayers extend to the ends of the earth, for all God's creation is the object of his love. Our prayer is an act of love too for the world. Let us pray to encompass all things within the circle of God's extraordinary care and keeping. In these far circles, hold everything in the love of the Father. Heavenly Father, rejoicing in the fellowship of St Mary, St Peter and St Paul and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer those who we are, are with us and those who aren't with us a sign of peace. And we come to our spiritual communion. Be present, be present Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh 
as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world is being renewed and humanity is once again made whole. And so with angels and archangels we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Please do share your spiritual communion along with me and as we have this moment of sharing, our choir will sing Here is Bread by Graham Kendrick. Oh
Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, of all we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who in the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is Happy Are They. I do wish you all a very good week. Keep safe, keep well. Do get in touch if you need anything. One of us will be phoning you this week to make sure that you're okay. But do please stay safe. And a final blessing for us all. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.